everyone. My name is Inne Wu from the Department of Urban Engineering. My research is about the sustainable eating lifestyles. I believe you have your own preference on food. Some people prefer meats, while others prefer vegetables. In fact, our food preferences have different influences on the carbon emissions. Let's do a simple math here. Let's see the boy on the left. He's eating 100 grams of beef. And the girl on the right, she's eating 100 grams of vegetables, who is resulting in more greenhouse gas emissions such as CO2 and methane. The answer is absolutely the boy on the left. The carbon footprint of beef is about 30 times as that of the vegetables. 30 times, that is a surprisingly huge difference. Why that? A little notion on the life cycles of food here. Let me explain what the life cycle is. Take an example of the potato chips. Firstly, the raw potatoes are agriculturally produced in the farmland. And then, the potatoes are processed into the potato chips, packaged and transported to the supermarkets. Then, you happen to buy a bag of it and enjoy the snacks. However, that's not the end of the whole life cycle. You throw the leftovers into the garbage. The life cycle ends here after the waste treatment. From the story of the potato chips, we now know that the life cycle of food includes seven stages. Agricultural production, processing, packaging, transportation, retail, consumption, and the waste treatment. So question, which stage contributes most to the greenhouse gas emissions? The answer is agricultural production. Up to 71% of the greenhouse gas emissions related to food come from the agricultural production. When ruminant animals such as cows and sheep digest food, large amounts of methane, a culprit of the global warming, are produced by the bacteria in their stomachs. However, when producing the plants and non-ruminant animals such as the pigs and chicken, there is no such worries. In fact, the life cycle of food contributes to up to one third of the global warming, in which over a half come from the animal-based foods. The life cycle of food involves a lot of complicated processes. For ordinary people, we don't have to understand every part of it. By little days, little changes in our eating habits, we can make a difference. For example, eating chicken or fish instead of eating beef, drinking soy milk instead of drinking milk, even if it is just one so in a week, we can make a huge difference. So that's the main idea of my research, finding sustainable eating lifestyles that people accept to make the world a better place.